Dear friends, in this video lesson, I'm going to discuss how logistic regression works in practice with an example, what I call walk the talk. And uh, this is part one of the video. Probably we will do it in two or three videos and complete the interpretation of logistic regression with this example, which I'm going to discuss. The data set contains information on 100 customers who make the purchase of a product, one is equal to purchase, zero is equal to no purchase in Simon's departmental store. Two predictor variables, namely spending within brackets $1,000 that is the amount spent last year by each customer and Simon credit card status, the second predictor variable, one is equal to having the card, zero is equal to not having the card. Build a logistic regression model and interpret the results. Data adapted from Anderson Sweeney Williams for discussion. I have run the model in Python and got the output. From the output, I have culled out all the important aspects of logistic regression for the purpose of discussion. First, I'm displaying the five records of the data set out of the 100, just the five records, a partial display. As you can see, spending is the predictor variable. Card is the other predictor variable. Purchase is the target variable, which is a zero one. Spending is measured in $1,000, and this is the display of the first five records. Card is a categorical predictor variable zero or one. Now, there are six crucial steps in understanding logistic regression. And I will discuss them in the particular order in which it should be discussed. First, the equation, logistic regression equation, probability P is given by E raised to the power Z divided by one plus E raised to the power Z. And Z is the regression here, which is B naught plus B one times spending plus B2 times card. Instead of X1 and X2, I use the names directly, spending and card. B0 is the intercept. B1 and B2 are the slopes corresponding to the two predictor variables, spending and card. P represents the probability that purchase is equal to one. One minus P represents the probability that purchase is equal to zero. So this is the structure of the model. And we need to estimate B0, B1, and B2 based on the log likelihood function, which we discussed earlier. And I'm building on that. And just uh, trying to give you the quintessence, the first step. Step one, is the model valid? Already, it's all right, you are doing logistic regression. So overall validity of the model using the log likelihood function and the corresponding log likelihood ratio p-value, they are very, very important. The computer gives the log likelihood for the full model 
minus 60.486948. I call it as LLF, full model, log likelihood, full model. Log likelihood null model is minus 67.301167, which is LLN. And here appears the p-value for the log likelihood function, which is 0 0.001098. Now, what is this null model? We all know log likelihood is maximized and this value is fine. This null model is, if I assume in the previous slide, for example, only the intercept exists B1, B2, they are not there. B1 and B2 are set equal to zero. In other words, Z is equal to B0, only the intercept. Then the log likelihood value running the Python script is minus 67.301167, which is LLN, which is called log likelihood null model. Now, there is a chi-squared, which is a non-parametric test in statistics. In this case, is calculated as two times LLF minus LLN. And if you do that here, its value is 13.628438. This is the value. And this follows a chi-squared with two degrees of freedom. Because we are estimating B1 and B2, B0, B1 and B2 are three, including the intercept, it is three, but only two predictor variables are estimated. Therefore, the degrees of freedom is two. And if you calculate the p-value using Excel or Python or anything, this will be the p-value, which is highly significant. If you look at 5% level of significance, even 1%, which is highly significant and therefore the model is valid. Overall validity of the model. This is the first step, ladies and gentlemen. We have passed the first step as far as this problem is concerned. And we will look at step 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. in the coming videos. Thank you very much. I hope you have gained some inputs. Of course, you will have to watch all the videos to understand how the model works in practice. Thanks a lot once again.